Okay, so my original plan for these, yes, these right here, these are, this is some cool stuff that we got going on right here, was to share the gigabit internet connection we have here at the office with my house, which is about 20 kilometers or about 13 miles away. Unfortunately, topography is a I would need a 60 meter antenna tower here at the office in order to achieve that. So, we are going back to square one with this video and we are going to structure this as holy sh episode four yes we are already on episode four of this segment and we're calling this one long distance wi-fi The Master Case 5 by Cooler Master gives you the freedom to truly make your mid tower PC case your own with a variety of modular parts and accessories. Check out the link in the video description to learn more. So, this is the Power Beam AC, a device that I assumed would be a lot more expensive than it was. I mean, Ubiquity sent it to us, so I had to look up how much it costs. It's only about 150 bucks, and with the kit, you actually get a variety of things. You get this uh, weather resistant plastic shell cover. You get this metal dish. You get this pole mount right here. Uh huh. You get this fastening rear housing doodad. You get this thing, which is like a mount for the other mount to mount the other thing with degrees on it. And then right here, you get the antenna feed. This is where the action happens. You also get a power over ethernet adapter, an injector thing as well, because it is powered using PoE. So on the side of this guy, you've got your power as well as your link indicator, and then four bars to indicate the speed of the link. And that's pretty much it. Oh wait, except you get two of them because the point of the Power Beam AC is to be able to handle a 450 megabit link at up to 25 kilometers. Now we are not gonna be able to mount these puppies up high enough in order to test that maximum range, but what we can do is we can at least do a limited test here in the parking lot and find out if the objective was to share a network connection with someone quite far away, whether it's a shed or whether it's a neighbor or whether it's from your office to your house if you happen to live somewhere flatter. Whether this technology looks pretty promising. Okay, so the assembly process is pretty straightforward. You take your antenna feed and yeah, no, wait, oh shoot, I forgot. Okay. Uh, right. You start with this bracket. You take this bad boy and pop it onto here. It only goes in one way. Then, <laughs> yeah, you pop this into here until it clicks. There we go. Then you take your pole mount, stick it through the thing. And finally, optionally, you can put on the weatherproofing mount, something that I would definitely recommend. Please note, and this was pointed out to me by my editor the last time around when we did this before our SD card died, <coughs> that this arrow corresponds to... I was sure there was an arrow. Ah, this arrow right here if you wanted to go on relatively easily. Now normally you'd have some kind of a pole mount here. So you'd go ahead, you'd put that on the pole and then you'd tighten it in and it would grip like that. But because we don't have a pole, at least not that kind of pole, do you know what I mean? We're just gonna go ahead and clamp it to a C stand for our initial testing. Okay, so the PoE adapter here is optional if you have a power over ethernet switch, but not everyone has one of those. So we're gonna show it using the adapter. Yes, we have power. Then from there, without dropping it, you plug into the network port of a computer so we're configuring our uh, internet protocol version four settings, 192.168.1. Anything other than 20 or over 254 or whatever it is. So I'm gonna go with 10 subnet mask. We can leave as default when you click it on there. And we're gonna set our default gateway to 192.168.1.20 and click OK. And check it out, we're logged into AirOS 7. So the first thing it tells you to do is change your password. I wish that more companies did this, where they actually force you to change your password before you can do pretty much anything else, but they don't and such is life. So now what we need to do is we have to configure it with a static IP address that is on the same 
subnet as the rest of our network. So uh, let's make it that. And configuration mode is simple. We actually have to change almost none of the settings on this bad boy to get it up and running, which is very, very cool. Okay, so now that we've reconfigured our network settings, we can go ahead and plug into an ethernet cable that is on the rest of the network that we wanna share. And then I'm switching back to my Wi-Fi here because I'm gonna use this direct attach cable to set up the other dish in a minute. Uh, but now we should be able to navigate to it at the new address that I've set for it. Wicked. Okay, so now that this is set up, we're gonna go to wireless and we are going to set up the mode. So this is going to be station point to point. So it was actually already correct. The SSID, we can make whatever we want. This is kind of like just a normal wireless hotspot um, for all intents and purposes here. Then I am going to turn our output power way down because we are testing at very close range here. And I'm gonna leave pretty much everything else on auto except security. So I'm just gonna put a rudimentary password on here, which is better than nothing and I'm going to save my changes. So as soon as this dish, here we go, detects long range SSID with the correct password, it should connect to it and we should have a link. But first, we need to hook up the other dish, or configure it rather. Ow, Oh damn that hurt. It is highly recommended to configure these while you are still very close to them not after you have deployed them 25 kilometers apart. Okay, so we're logged into our second unit. Now what we're going to do is set up our network settings uh, differently from the last one. So instead of .64, we're gonna go .66. So we have to go ahead and put this one then onto the main network here. We are very close actually. Okay, so we are on our last step now. We go to wireless on the second unit. This one is access point peer to peer. So the SSID we used was long range. Okay, we're leaving everything on auto, turning the output power way down. Okay, so the further the distance, the more important perfect alignment is, but at this kind of distance, it really doesn't matter much. So I'm gonna plug in my POE injected powered thing. So this guy gets power. And then what you should see on that side, if you go around the side of the dish, is in a moment here, the link indicator should light up. Hey, there we go. All right, rock on. So now we've got a link. Let's test it out. Okay, so now what we do is we go back and change those custom network settings. We go back to automatic everything, blippity bloppity done. I'm plugged from the laptop into my PUE injector, into the dish, which is connected to the dish, which is connected to the server room, which is not disorienting at all. From there, we should be able to get an internet connection. Boom! Yeah, baby, all right. Okay, now speed test isn't always a solid indicator for us around here. I don't know what it is exactly, but the good news is that we're seeing very consistent results here. <laughs> At least we were. And while not 450 megabit per second, and the, wow, the upload is going much better than the downlink. That's very interesting. We are still seeing speeds that are pretty darn reasonable looking for our, uh, our dish, dish Wi-Fi. What else we got in here? Oh, they have other tests too. So they have, a, they have their own internal speed test. So you can go ahead and go, oh yeah, I wanna use uh, this one. Here's my username and password and start. And this will tell you the just raw receive and transmit speeds between the two units. And we have a solution. This right here is a portable battery bank. Doesn't look exceptional. That's where it charges. Boom! AC outlet. So we're gonna use that to power the dish at the other end of the parking lot. Now, there is one more tool we're gonna need that I didn't show you guys before. This is really cool. This is the Align Antenna Tool. So you can see right here what the signal levels are in real time. So watch, as I move the dishes so they point more towards each other, and 
V theoretically signal strength improves. Ah, there goes my battery bank. Oh, I hope that didn't break. Okay. Ah, oh, crap. This is a lot heavier than I had hoped. Maybe I should help you. No, no, it's fine. I got this. I get it. Camera people union can't actually lift a bloody finger to help me with anything. Okay. Oh, sorry. Oh. sorry, I got this. I got this. Okay. So I'm just going to start hiking. Okay. So with poor alignment at the lowest possible strength, we are still seeing about 200 megabit per second up and down. And that's with Ed standing right in the way of the antenna. Way to go, Ed. Actually, it didn't go down much. So inside the building, you had to make pretty big changes to the dish alignment in order to really affect this. Here, I am barely even touching it. So here we are, way down the road, still enjoying. That was pretty much the same speed test we were doing on the downlink. And however confusing this might be, it actually seems to be running a little bit faster on the uplink. So there you go. You can interpret that however you want. I'm sure with all of some tuning, we could actually get better speeds out of it, particularly down. There's probably something where I don't really know what I'm doing, but in spite of Ubiquity offering to have one of their engineers help me, I was like, ah, I want to see if I can do it. Let's see what kind of a result someone can get just following the most basic rudimentary guide. And there you have it. Holy sh long distance, five gigahertz, like beam access point, point to point thing going on here. Very freaking cool. So guys, if you didn't like this video, hit the dislike button. We're not afraid of it. But if you did like it, hit the like button, get subscribed to our channel, maybe even consider supporting us by changing your Amazon bookmark to one with our affiliate code, the instructions for which are up there. You can buy a cool shirt like this one at the link in the video description or also linked in the video description. Got like cars driving past. Also linked in the video description. I mean, can you imagine that? Okay, so, so you know, there's street hockey, right? So everyone's all like, car! So you got your like Wi-Fi dish going across the road. It's like you're in the middle of a like Dota match. It's like, hold on, hold on everyone, hold on everyone. Car, car. <laughs> Maybe that's less funny than I thought it was. Anyway, the third way to support us is right, heading over to the forum. People can answer your tech questions. You can join up, you can answer other people's tech questions. You can become a contributor, get a cool little badge. And I think that's pretty much it. So if you're wondering what to watch next and you're thinking, wow, these guys make great videos. How about checking out the last episode of Holy Shit, the one where we checked out a battery the size of me. Watch out for that truck. <laughs>